bonus video time. Today, we're going to be reviewing four products or devices that you should be considering when building out your smart home. These didn't make it into the basics of a smart home that required their own dedicated video, but they're honorable mentions that I'd like you to consider adding to your home as soon as possible. A couple of these are gonna save you a lot of money and potential damages on your home. Before we dive into the video, I want to take a quick moment, as always, and we're going to recap where we have started and where we're at now. So today, we're going to be doing a bonus video on some basic devices that you should be considering adding to your smart home. Before you watch the rest of this video, I'd really appreciate it if you haven't already, take the moment, click the playlist on your screen, and consider watching from the very beginning the basics of a smart home what devices you should be purchasing in what order so that you can have the greatest smart home experience. The devices compound on each other and work cohesively together. They create a seamless smart home environment. Now, you don't have to watch it from the beginning. I highly encourage you to do it because a lot of what we talk about builds upon each other. So every video you watch, the next following video will build upon that previous one. Make sure you watch the entire video. I am dropping a secret hint as to what's coming next. Bonus device time. Which ones are we talking about? We're going to be covering garage doors, smoke alarms and CO2 detectors, water leak sensors, as well as a water shutoff valve. And then lastly, I'm going to cover one that's a little bit harder to find, but it's something that's found in a lot of other devices as well. And that's going to be luminosity or Lux light style sensors. First device on the list is smart garage door openers. I have one of these already and I absolutely love it. It's probably one of my favorite devices that I added to my home. It gives me just a peace of mind, specifically here in Alaska, where it's very cold. It's honestly really common where people leave their garage doors open and they end up freezing the pipes in their garage and causing a lot of damage to their home. It's a very expensive fix. And with a smart garage door opener, you can fix this problem by knowing when your garage door is opening and even have it set up to close automatically for you. The one that I use is by MyQ and I'm really not happy with it right now. Originally, MyQ gave us the ability to use third-party applications to connect to their app and remotely control the application. So I use a smart home hub called Home Assistant, which gave me control through my MyQ and I could set up automations to open or close my garage door when necessary. They removed this third-party access and I wasn't super happy about it. So there are some other devices I'm going to show you that might be a better fit for you. I personally am probably gonna be looking at purchasing another one that gives me that third-party access. I understand security features and everything like that, but I'd prefer to have that over somebody that doesn't wanna give us that capability. MyQ is the one I use right now. It's fairly inexpensive. I bought it at the time because it was, the same price to purchase the smart door opener as it was to actually purchase an additional button remote that you put on the visor of your car. We only had one when we bought our house. And at the time, both of our cars didn't have the button inside of it. Now, both of our vehicles have the button that's connected to it. So we don't even use that garage door remote, but it was still less expensive at the time. Now, there's a really great benefit because you can actually set up automations with these smart garage doors so that when you leave a certain proximity, the garage door closes, or when you enter that proximity, the garage door opens for you. The other thing is it makes it so much easier to not have to carry keys all the time when we go on a walk. This is coupled with a smart door lock, which we'll cover in the future, but it makes it nice because all I have to do is hit the button on my phone to open or close my garage when I take my kids on a walk. Other great things that work with it as well is I had originally set up a notification for 10 minutes. So anytime the garage door was open for 10 minutes, it would tell me. I even had it set up to send me a notification letting me know and giving me the ability to close it right then and there from that notification. This got a little annoying, but it is nice to have, especially in the winter time. The other thing I did was give me a 10 minute reminder after the door had been closed. The other great thing I used to do was I had it check. So at a certain time of night, it was 10 o'clock for me, that I would have it close the garage door. So if the door was open when 10 o'clock hit, it would automatically try and close that garage door for me. This was kind of funny once or twice, I was actually taking the trash out at 10 o'clock. Because you're remotely closing the garage, it gives you a beeping sound uh, for a few seconds before the door actually starts closing. 
And so I'm at the end of my driveway in the dead of winter and I hear the beeping sound starting that the garage door is going to start closing. I had to hustle back uh, in the very cold, slick driveway uh, to make sure that I got in my garage before it closed. A smart garage door is one of the greatest things that you could add to your home. There's so much functionality that you can add by adding cameras to your garage, by adding contact sensors to your doors, motion sensors. There's a lot of building of automations you can do with a smart garage door opener. Now, the other really cool thing is a lot of modern homes come equipped with this already. So you don't have to buy the additional sensor. All you have to do is look at the garage door opener on your wall. And you'll notice on there, there's a lot of times a sticker with a QR code. And if you scan that, it will download the app and it will walk you through the process to set that up. So it's already a built-in feature to a lot of garage doors. If you don't have those features built in, consider purchasing one. They're about $40. That's fairly inexpensive to save you the money and keep you from forgetting your garage door opening and having either stuff stolen or stuff frozen and broken in your garage. Now, the next one I want to talk about is water leak sensors. I'm going to tell you a little story about what happened to me here recently as well. Water leak sensors can save you so much money because it's going to detect whenever water touches that sensor, it's going to let you know that there's a leak somewhere. Generally speaking, you're going to be putting this under a sink, like your kitchen sink or bathroom sink. Uh, or in my case, I have like in-floor heating in my garage. I can set it next to that. So if there's a puddle of water around that space, then it will set that off for me. I recently wish I would have had one. But when I think about it, there's not really a way I would have been able to know about this one because I have in-floor heating. If you watched my last video, you would know that. And one of our in-floor heating pipes actually cracked and had been leaking slowly for months on end is what we believe. In the end, multiple of our cabinets were damaged by mold. They were unable to be repaired. So good news is we're getting a brand new kitchen, but that's what these water sensors are for, or water leak sensors are for, is to detect this type of thing. So if you did have a leak, instead of it becoming a massive is issue, you're gonna have the sensor send you a notification and also make a lot of noise, kind of like a smoke alarm, and let you know that there's a leak somewhere. I can really use this because my kitchen sink kept leaking. Uh, turns out that the drain pipe was just super clogged up uh, with a bunch of hair. I don't know how the kitchen sink got that way, but it did, whatever. So it kept backing up and leaking and I couldn't figure out why until I finally dismantled the plumbing and found out what the problem was. But had I had this sensor, I would have caught it and that cabinet wouldn't have been so damaged. It was kind of already a lost cause though. So it's whatever at this point, but again, I'm getting a new kitchen, so it doesn't matter to me. But my plan is to put one of these sensors in that kitchen cabinet because I am not letting that cabinet get destroyed this time around. And it wasn't even that cabinet that caused the major issue anyways. Overall, water leak sensors are great for various places throughout your house to detect minor leaks and potentially even big leaks as well. Let me know down in the comments below where you might put one of these sensors. I'd love to hear what your your thoughts are so maybe I can put one there too. The other type of leak sensor that I came across is Moen. Well, they made one that connects in line into your water line. So this is going to go somewhere where the main water line comes into your house. So whether you have a well or you're on public water, uh, you'd put it on that line somewhere after your meter. And what this is going to do for you is it is a smart way to shut off your water. So if you have a major, major water leak, I could see this coming into play and being able to shut that off. It probably also tracks how much water is going through it so you know if, hey, there's a big change in how much water's going through it, we need to trip the sensor and shut the water off because there's a lot more water coming out of this than it really should be. It comes with a pretty hefty price tag. So I just kind of tacked it on there just as a fun, interesting device that you could add on there if you really wanted to. But again, for three, four, five hundred dollars pretty expensive there. Now, device number three slash four, because technically this is two different devices here. One is smoke alarms and the other are your CO2 detectors. I'm going to preface this with a lot of times you'll see smoke and CO2 detectors in one combined device, which to me is not very smart. The reason why this isn't very smart is smoke detectors are put on the ceiling because smoke rises. It's going to be able to detect the smoke when it goes up. With CO2, it drops down to the ground. So most CO2 detectors are actually designed to go down towards the ground so that whenever the CO2 is down low, it will be able to pick it up and detect it. So most smoke detectors slash CO2 detector combos are actually mounted on the ceiling, which completely 
negates the CO2 aspect of it. And if you try to mount it on the ground, it defeats the smoke portion of it. So save your money. Don't buy the combo ones. They are available from places like Costco or even some of the ones I saw online that are the smart versions of them. I'm going to stay away from those ones. I mean, you could spend your money on it if you were getting one already, but I highly encourage you to have separate smoke detectors on the ceiling as well as a CO2 detector on the ground. With that being said, smoke detectors are a great smart device to have. Vivint and Nest already actually have these in their lineup already. And I had it when I had my old home and I had Vivint. It was terrible. Don't use Vivint. I know I'm going to throw them under the bus right now, but don't ever do it if you're considering it. Don't go Vivint. It's it's terrible experience. The one thing I did like was their smoke detectors. They're kind of cool. Uh, but basically what they did was they talked to you. So if it did notice smoke through cooking or whatever it was, it would tell you where it detected it. So you could label each individual detector in a specific area. If you don't know, the United States Code states that a smoke detector is required in every bedroom, all hallways leading to a bedroom, as well as one on every level. So for instance, in my house, I have a downstairs, so smoke detector one. I have an upstairs with four bedrooms. So there are now a total of five smoke detectors. And then the hallway that leads to those bedrooms, as well as that's the second level. So that's smoke detector number six. So I need six of them in my house and I could label them individually so that whenever there is smoke detected, it could tell me where it's potentially coming from or where that first place saw it. Also, what you can do is you can set up automations from these. So if it does detect smoke, you could automatically unlock your house if you have smart locks built in. That's a secret. We're going to get to that later. Great way to build on to your smart home is by having these smoke detectors in there. They do get a little expensive just because you need so, again, I need six of them. So they do start adding up in price there. But to me, it is so worth it having something that's audibly going to tell you where it's coming from, as well as being able to mobily check if there's a problem. There are so many times that I wish I would have had the capability to see uh, if there was a problem at home by checking those smoke detectors, as well as my cameras that are inside my home. As a reminder, buy these separately, or if you're going to buy them, buy a, a smoke CO2 detector combo. Make sure you put one up high and one down below. The CO2 detectors are required one per level of your home. So for instance, I have a two-story home. I need two CO2 detectors in my home. Now for the last device. This is a lux sensor, which detects light or luminosity, light sensor, whatever you want to call it. Finding them online was kind of difficult. There was a time when I found one that was exteriorly, exteriorly mounted on my home and I was really wanting it and now I can't find it again. But what's really cool about these style devices is what they're detecting is how bright it currently is, which can then tell you whether or not a light needs to be turned on. There are some sensors that come this bit come with this built in already. A lot of motion sensors have them or my FP2 sensor from Acara, which is somewhat of a motion sensor, but it's more of the presence sensor comes with this feature built in. And what's really cool is you can set a threshold that if it is over a certain brightness, do not turn on the lights. Now this is difficult because the brightness is going to vary from room to room to room to room. What I would love to see, and Alaska is kind of a unique scenario because we have so much time where it's light in the summer, but I would love to have an outside or exterior mounted one so that it can check the brightness from there and then determine whether it wants to turn on the lights uh, based on that sensor plus the sensor mounted in that room if I were to have one. So Lux sensors come built into a lot of things. You can find them on Amazon, but a lot of times it's more so that you're building your own style device and you're adding that feature into it, but it is possible. I'd love to see more manufacturers make this style device specifically one that mounts on the exterior of your home so that it can always be checking how bright right it is and determine different functionality through there. You could do a lot with opening and closing curtains in the morning or in the evening or setting morning or bedtime routines based on the uh, lightness outside and then combine it with the time of day. There we have it. Those are four devices that you should consider adding to your smart home. Now, again, these are not specific required devices. They just build upon the amazing smart home that you've already built through the journey of the basics of a smart home. I hope you've enjoyed it today. Coming next though is the basics of security. Now in that series, we're gonna be doing it very similarly to how we did the basics of a smart home. But now we're going to be building out security features of our home. And a lot of these are going to actually tie back into the basics of a smart home. So some of those things that you've already purchased are going to be able to double 
as security devices as well. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you've liked it, give me the thumbs up, hit that button down below, share this with a friend, comment down below what your favorite part is of the basics of a smart home. And then lastly, smash that like button. I can't tell you how much it means to me whenever you hit that button and I see my subscribers growing. And then also something I haven't mentioned in a while is my light switch. There we go. I have one light switch still. And I said when we hit 500 subscribers, I was going to give one away. Well, we still haven't hit 500, but we are over halfway there. So if you like this, share it with a friend, hit that subscribe button for your chance to win a free smart switch. Thank you so much again for joining me. My name's Ian. We'll see you guys next time.